local law enforcement officials met this morning to talk about new efforts to build better relationships with the people they protect and serve. Workers are putting the pedal to the metal on the extension of a local bike trail, and an old scam is looking for new victims in East Alabama. One more dry day across East Alabama, then some showers coming in for the weekend. We'll have the complete forecast details coming up. Coming up in sports, Prep Baseball Alabama is holding an invite-only showcase. A couple players from our area have been invited. We have more on that in just a minute as EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Mike Statham. And I'm Katie Edwards. Better communication with the public was one of the major topics discussed this morning as top police officials gathered in Golden Springs to discuss the state of law enforcement. The forum, presented by the Calhoun County Chamber and Visitor Center, invited leaders to share ideas and initiatives that have been working for their communities. Oxford Police Chief Bill Partridge says his department will be rolling out a new app next week that promises to make it easier for people with smartphones and other mobile devices to stay in touch with their police. It will give them an opportunity to give us tips online that are anonymous. It will also give them an opportunity to see the things that we are able to do for them on a daily basis and things that they can request for us to do. And I just think it's better that we're able to push out information faster, especially emergency announcements and notifications and weather notifications will be pushed out on that app to pertain to the city of Oxford. And I think this is going to help accomplish that. Nick Bowles, Aniston's police chief, says his department began an outreach effort last summer called the Youth Explorer and Service Team. He says the YES program was so successful, it'll be brought back this year and involve more students. It was good. We had about seven kids in it last year. I think we've got 15 this year. Uh, once we put the word out and we kind of published what the YES program was about, about teaching kids about law enforcement, you know, not to be fearful of law enforcement, not to be fearful of the job itself. There's a lot of negativity that comes out in the media about it. So we wanted to expose them from the basic things that they would learn in the police academy all the way through the job, even the mundane things that we have to do. But, you know, they get to ride with officers. They get to experience things at the police academy. We took them to police academy tr actual trainings and they got to train with the people who were in the academy and get those hands-on experiences that I wasn't able to get and that most of us are not able to get before that when, when we're in high school thinking about a career in law enforcement. In Jacksonville, Police Chief Marcus Wood says a fishing pond built near the city's public safety complex has proven to be a great resource for reaching out to the public. Fishing tournaments have brought hundreds of children to the pond and it's also a popular spot for family gatherings. We don't have to travel far to interact with people. Uh, a lot of times we're going down there checking on the lake, feeding the fish, and so that alone just opens up conversations with citizens, uh, you know, and so that provides a good way for us to connect with people. Uh, being able to have those 150 kids come out and we're able to connect with them, uh, having a partnership with Walmart that provides the fishing rods for us, uh, that is really, really uh, paid dividends for our community. Uh, and you know, we talk about recruiting and law enforcement for us, that's kind of starting that recruiting train and building those relationships early. Wood says Jacksonville recently received a grant from the T-Mobile company to build a pavilion that stretches over a portion of the pond, and he expects that will make the spot even more popular with visitors. Piedmont Police Chief Nathan Johnson says his department is taking advantage of the 13 miles of bike trails in his city by forming a bike patrol division, which offers opportunities for more interactions with the public. While the officers are out patrolling on, on bikes, uh, you can't get any closer to your community than having an officer in that capacity. It, it allows citizens there that, to come up and talk to the officers. It makes the officers more approachable, more relatable to uh, the people that's in that area. Uh, we was able to develop relationships. There's been nothing but good come from this program. Tomorrow, we'll hear from other local law enforcement officials about projects to make Calhoun County a safer community. And when we come back, the area's premier bike trail is being prepared for miles of new pavement. 
For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Aniston officials say they have made significant progress on the Chief Ladiga Trail extension, which will connect the current trailhead at Michael Tucker Park with downtown Aniston. Ground was broken for the project back on April 12th, and since that time, workers have been clearing trees, brush, and debris within the trail boundaries. Bridge removal has been completed at four sites with minimal impact on the streams and waterways that were spanned by the old bridges. The contractor on the project, BNB Developers, cleared a log jam in Cane Creek during the removal of bridge number four, resulting in a free flowing waterway. An additional portion of bridge number one near 4th Street had to be removed on the left side of the trail, and the existing culvert between Blue Mountain Road and m &H Valve has also been removed. In preparation for base and paving, BNB has prepared the topsoil along most of the trail, exposing the underlying rock from the old railroad bed. That base and paving work is expected to begin in a few weeks. Aniston's trail extension will stretch an additional six and a half miles, bringing the Chief Ladiga's trail's total length to approximately 39 and a half miles. The trail will then connect Aniston's multimodal Amtrak station on 4th Street to the state of Georgia's Silver Comet Trail near Cedartown. The finished trail, which runs down into the Atlanta suburbs, will form the longest paved pedestrian pathway in the United States with about 105 miles of trail. When we return, area residents are being warned about some phony phone calls claiming to be from a local sheriff's office. Spring into freshness at WM. Celebrate the season with our bountiful selection of farm fresh produce. From juicy berries to crisp greens, taste the flavors of spring at WM. Visit us today and let the freshness bloom in every bite. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Scammers claiming to be representatives of the Cleburne County Sheriff's Office have been contacting Cleburne County residents in an attempt to solicit money based on pending warrants. The Cleburne County Sheriff's Office issued a news release saying that it would never contact citizens asking for money or personal information via the telephone to clear a warrant or for any other reason. The deputies say that such calls are scams and they should be ignored, and they're asking that residents share this information with their neighbors who don't have social media. They say this is a popular scam nationwide that victimizes innocent people daily for thousands of dollars. Mike, is it just me or have we been experiencing some milder temperatures or maybe it's the humidity that's down? I'm not sure if it's humid. I think the thermometer's actually been a little bit cooler. In the mornings anyway, it's yes. been cooler after the really, it seems like summer came and it kind of went away and then it's coming back again. Who knows? John Holder knows. Good. <laughs> he joins us now in the EAN Weather Center to tell us all about it. John? Mike and Katie, it has been milder. That's because of lower humidity and dew point values. But that is about to change for the weekend. We've got more moisture heading back to East Alabama. We'll tell you what that's going to mean for our forecast coming up next. For metal buildings in Alabama and the southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop Metal Building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop Buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. 
Both our daytime high and our nighttime low today, a little bit below the average for this time of year. 82 for the high this afternoon, a little bit below the average. 58 down into the uh, upper 50s again this morning across East Alabama, well below our average for this time of year. Low humidity values making it feel a little bit like fall out there, actually. Record high temperature, 95 degrees back in 2011, 47 for the record low. The sun setting tonight at 748 and the sun rising very early tomorrow at 534 on your Friday. Here's weather on your street for a Thursday night on Vigo Road heading out to the east of Piedmont, heading out in the country along the Chief Ladiga Trail. It's going to be mostly clear tonight and very pleasant out in Vigo and Piedmont and all the surrounding areas dropping down to 60 tonight under clear skies. We've got a good Friday coming up. We mentioned that we've got one more guaranteed dry day. That's tomorrow on Spring Street in Oxford. Sunny and warm. Going to be warmer tomorrow than today by about four or five degrees, 86 for the high, plenty of sunshine, no rain in the forecast. As we look ahead to that all important weekend forecast, flipping that calendar over to June on Cadell Circle and Hoax Bluff, moisture returns. That means late afternoon, early evening, scattered showers and thunderstorms with the heating of the day, chance of rain about 30 to 50 percent on most days beginning on Saturday. Highs will remain in the 80s. Here's the seven day forecast. We've been mentioning that one more dry day. If you want a guaranteed day without any rain, that will be tomorrow. After that, every day for the rest of the way, probably for the rest of the summertime, we're going to have those late afternoon, early evening scattered showers and thunderstorms with the heating of the day, about a one in three chance Saturday. The best chance on Sunday, about a 60% chance of showers after church. And then we'll kind of broad brush a 30 to 40% chance of showers early to midweek of next week. Looks like our next really widespread rainfall may be in about a week on Thursday. Chance of rain up at about 70%. But again, none of these days are all day washouts. Again, mainly in the afternoon with the heating of the day, pop up scattered showers and thunderstorms. Highs remain in the mid to upper 80s for next week and nighttime lows in the mid to upper 60s across East Alabama. And looking ahead to the month of June across East Alabama, looks like temperatures are going to be a little bit above the average even for June. This is from the Climate Prediction Center, so maybe seeing a few 90s out there across East Alabama as we move into the month of June, which begins on Saturday. I'll be back here here tomorrow morning, bright and early at 6 a.m. as we'll have the complete forecast for your Friday across East Alabama. And of course, join us back here tomorrow night for EAN Local News as we'll detail the weather forecast for the weekend for all of East Alabama. Sports is next with Namath Pitts. He's going to talk about the Alabama State Games. Namath. Thanks, John. Prep Baseball is excited to present the Alabama State Games. The Alabama State Games is a brand new event taking place on Tuesday, June 18th and Wednesday, June 19th. This is a two-day invite-only event that will consist of a workout day and two games for all participants. Alabama State Games will take place at the Sand Mountain Park in Alberville. So far, there are a lot of East Alabama players that have been invited, but let's take a look at a couple. Let's start with Bray Goode from Alexandria. The first person to be invited from East Alabama is Bray Goode. Bray Goode is a left-handed pitcher and outfielder for the Valley Cubs. He will be a senior next year, and his club team is Excel. Goode batted 304 this past season with 14 RBIs. Goode had over 45 strikeouts and under a 3.5 earned run average on the mound. Bray throws 85 to 87 on his fastball, sits at 72 to 74 on his changeup, and 75 to 77 on his curveball. Bray Goode talked about how it feels to be invited to the state games and what he is looking forward to the most. I'm really honored and excited to go play in the um, Yellowhammer games. Um, thank you to PBR and David Sharp for giving this opportunity. Um, I'm most excited to go, you know, go play against some of the best players in Alabama and you know, meet some of the guys that I'll be competing with. Um, and, and just in all, I'm really excited to you know, get my name out there and you know, going out there and compete and just play baseball. Bray Goode will be joined by Glavin Lambert from Hoax Bluff, who was also invited to the state games. Glavin is a first baseman and right-handed pitcher for the Eagles. He will be a senior next year and plays for the Excel Blue Wave 2025 team. This past season, Glavin hit four home runs, had 19 RBIs, and had a batting average of 505, which means every other at bat he got a hit. Glavin has an exit velo of 93.5 and, and averages 88.8 .8 on his exit velo with his bat. He pitches well for the Eagles. 
He sits at about 79 to 80 on his fastball, 64 to 65 on his changeup, and 68 to 70 on his curveball. Glavin talked about how it feels to be invited to the state games and what he is looking forward to the most. My name is Glavin Lambert, and I'm very excited to be invited to the PBR Yellowhammer State Games. I want to thank David Sharp and all the guys at PBR for inviting me, and I'm very gracious for the opportunity. I'm most excited to just go out there and compete against some of the best players in the state and meet a lot of new guys and a lot of new good players. And I'm just very excited to go out there and play some baseball. Westbrook Christian has three players so far that have been invited to the state games. We are going to take a look at two of those players today. The first player is Brody Johnson. He'll be a junior next year for the Warriors. Brody plays shortstop and is a right-handed pitcher. He plays club for Team Alabama 15U. This past season, Brody had a batting average of 308 with 28 RBIs. Brody is a great defensive player who has quick feet, fields with two hands, funnels to center, and plays through the baseball. Brody sits 78 to 81 on his fastball, 66 to 70 on his changeup, and 64 to 66 on his curveball. Joining Brody Johnson from Westbrook Christian is Jacob Maples. Jacob will be a junior for the Warriors next season. Jacob plays outfield and second base. His club team is Team Alabama. This past season, Jacob had a batting average of 264 with 19 RBIs and 23 runs. Joining Bray Good from Calhoun County is Marcus Lawler from Donahoe. Marcus will be a junior next year for the Falcons. He plays second base and shortstop for Donahoe. Marcus plays club ball for XL 15U. Marcus has a strong arm and plays great defense with clean movement while covering the ground well. Marcus has an exit velocity of 94.2 with his average being 90. Marcus doesn't pitch as consistently as others, but does sit between 76 to 81 on his fastball. We have more players from East Alabama that were also selected. We'll talk more about them next week as we get closer to the event. That's it for EAN Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for that update, Namath, and thank you for watching us today. You can find us every weeknight on Facebook and YouTube and on a variety of sites, including our website, The Calhoun Journal and Newsbreak. Go to the platform of your choice and watch our news, sports, and weather coverage whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Friday for your news on your schedule.